lot of people, I would say, who are coming to listen to what I say because they're sick and tired of having their desire to move forward in the world and to achieve something and to take their place as adult males, let's say, who are under the weight of accusations that their ambition and forthrightness is a manifestation of something that's fundamentally tyrannical. They're not happy with that. slavery in the US was actually most people cooperate. Well, no, you didn't. You had a system where one set of people owned another set of people. And until women got full legal rights, they could own property for themselves, they could work. Essentially, they were owned. They were you're first attributing their owned lowest, by their fathers and then their by their husbands. Status to the domination by men. Yeah. You already said that you thought that what emancipated women primarily in the 20th century was technological revolution. No, not okay, primarily, so but that's it? one of two. I think that's it's two not things. primarily, eh? No, you I don't th think the pill was a primary force in the emancipation of women. I think or it was... the invention of, of tampons, let's say, or the, or the provision of proper sanitary uh, facilities, uh, toilets and that sort of thing. You're, you're, you're thinking instead it was the action of courageous feminists in the 1920s that produced a social revolution that overthrew the patriarchy. That's your theory. Yeah, I That's think... That's a foolish theory. Well, I'm very sorry to hear you say that, but I think, to quote you in the Kathy Newman interview, I think it's a multivariate, right? I think there are lots of different things that all contributed to well, women getting rights. Well, then let's not be assuming that, that Western society was a tyrannical patriarchy. Well, no, that's then, one of them, and assumption. then other things happened as well. So you have the pill, you have the dishwasher and white goods, labour-saving devices in the home. I think all of those were really important. But you also have things like campaigns for the vote. Yes, you also have things like that, yes. So how, when, in a system that existed in England until 1918, when... Why half... would you even want to look at history like that? Like, what, what's, your, what's your goal? Because exactly. I think the people who don't look at history are condemned to repeat it, and I think that we are... We're gonna, what are we going to do? Repeat the, the persecution of women? That, do you yeah. think that's a realistic possibility? Yeah, we're sitting here... How do you see that? We're sitting happening? here in America, right, where we've just had a fifth judge appointed to the Supreme Court who is now anti-abortion, who's now conservative. I think that abortion rights are absolutely fundamental to women being able to function as full humans in society, and I think that is now under threat in America. I think it is extremely smug and complacent to think civilization has peaked, it's all up woods from here. Yeah, well, um, good luck with that, I suppose. <laughs> it's a living. Like, I, you know, I, I, there are lots of people who agree with me. There are lots of people clearly who agree with you. Um, I wanted no, to there are just a lot of people, I would say, who are coming to listen to what I say because they're sick and tired of having their desire to move forward in the world and to achieve something and to take their place as adult males, let's say who are under the weight of accusations that their ambition and forthrightness is a manifestation of something that's fundamentally tyrannical. They're not happy with that. It's not doing anyone any good, and it's also not true. It's really a terrible thing to do to young men, and it's happening all the time. That's why they're bailing out of universities like mad. There won't be a man left in the social sciences in 10 years in the universities, and it's no bloody wonder. It's an unhospitable place, and it's unhospitable precisely because of this doctrine, said that throughout history the fundamental relationship between men and women was one of power, essentially slavery. It's like, fine, believe it if you want. It's not going to do your relationships any good, I can tell you that. So. Okay, well, we'll, we'll see how that one goes. I'm, mm. I'm currently married, but it, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll raise it with him. Um, I think the university's example is a really fascinating one, because you talk in the book about the fact that now women are a majority on two-thirds of college courses in the US. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I've also seen you saying, would well, you believe in equality of opportunity but not equality of outcome? Maybe women... It isn't only that I don't believe oh. in equality of outcome, I think it's an unbelievably pathological wish and doctrine. Right, and but, okay. it's dangerous. History has demonstrated exactly how dangerous it is. Equality of opportunity is something that anyone with any sense would support, but equality of outcome, it's... So what's your you problem with there not being... beyond belief to, to, to support equality of outcome. Okay, so what's your problem with there not being enough men in the social sciences? That perhaps women are just cleverer. Perhaps that's why there are more women at university, Could right? Be. Under your doctrine. I don't think that, but that's well, I think the logical the extension of your doctrine. The isn't the fact that there's an unequal distribution. The problem I have with it is that the reason that men are bailing out is because of the prevalence of the doctrine that you're espousing. That's the problem I have with it. It doesn't matter that much. They will bail out. I don't see any way that the universities are going to redeem themselves in the next decade. So, and, and maybe that will be fine, but I doubt it. We'll That's, see. That seems extremely pessimistic when the, majority, the numbers of people going to university just generally are going up. Yeah, well, that's not going to last for very long. Why not? Because it's too expensive and the universities are doing all sorts of things that aren't um, acceptable, mostly racking up the price, ratcheting up the price. So, and, and decreasing the quality of what they're offering. And 
playing into the hands of the people who are ideological acolytes of the identity politics routines and playing postmodern stunts and pushing neo-Marxism and all these things that are characteristic of, of the social sciences and the humanities primarily.